Hello, my name is Kevin Chen, and I'm part of the 50th Anniversary Committee here at Ally E. Stevenson High School in Lincolnshire, Illinois. And today I'm joined by Mrs. Nancy Stevenson and Mr. Ally E. Stevenson III, who is the son of Ally E. Stevenson II, whom the school was named for. So how are you today? I'm very happy to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. And I too. And when was the last time you were back here at Stevenson High School? Well, I was here just a few weeks ago and had a tour of this amazing place. Mm -hmm. So I feel very much at home, okay. but uh, it's been longer for you. Well, I feel very much at home, but it's been several years mm -hmm. since I've been here. Well, welcome back. So um, this year is our 50th anniversary, and, and can you believe that it's over, like 50 years have passed by since our dedication day on November 21st, 1965. Now, Mr. Stevenson, I know you were here um, at the dedication ceremonies, and you gave a speech. Um, but were you present, Mrs. Stevenson? I was. Okay, and so um, do you want to go through what you remember about that dedication? Well, I, I remember making a speech, <laughs> 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 but it's been so long, like 1965, that uh, frankly I don't remember what I said yeah. in my speech. We actually have a recording of the speech. <laughs> we can actually play it right now. Um, it's well, a, it's are you sure you want to? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a good speech. And and I also remember that uh, it was a dedication of the statue mm -hmm. by a friend, uh, Mr. Hunt, <coughs> and, um, and, and the statue is still there, okay, yeah. so that was special too. All right. So we have uh, the dedication right here, and I'll, it's about five minutes long, and then maybe we can um, get your memories rolling again. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dick Cromarty. Superintendent Page, distinguished guests and good friends. It's a great pleasure to be here this afternoon. My father always had a very large and special place in his heart for, for the young. I. Uh, he always was young himself in uh, in spirit. He never uh, uh, never really uh, uh, aged. And in his guileless, uh, terribly sort of interested uh, way with children, he uh, he had an unusual knack for communicating with the children. He uh, he loved children. He loved the young. And by and large, I think they they loved him. I remember. Uh, very well an incident which took place in 1952, just, uh, just, a, just a short distance down the road in Half Day. Uh, my father voted in, in uh, Half Day, and in 1952, after voting, a group of children assembled to, uh, uh, to meet with him, and he addressed them by saying, uh, how many children would like to be governor of Illinois? And all the children, of course, raised their uh, hands. Whereupon he said, how many governors would like to be children? And he then <laughs> waved his hand. <laughs> he loved the children. He loved the young. And he had a deep interest in formal education. As governor, I don't suppose any other issue before the state preoccupied him more. His administration, if my memory serves me correctly, doubled state assistance for the common schools in the state. <clears throat> and of course, he loved, he loved this area. He returned here frequently from the United Nations <coughs> to restore his energies, to revive his sometimes flagging spirits. I remember well seeing him time and again uh, on these journeys back to to Libertyville, to his uh, to his farm, which is only a few miles from here. Sitting, musing on the on the lawn with a with a yellow pad of paper across his his knees, looking out over the over the fields and out over over the Des Plaines uh, River, every so often jotting down an idea as it as it came to him. Then he'd return after these, after these journeys to his home, refreshed, go back to the struggle in New York. I don't think he'd, he'd have done nearly so well in New York if it hadn't been for his home right here, where he could come and revive his spirits, where he could come and take strength from good friends, from good times, and from this land which he loved so. I think 
his school is, is very appropriate. We are, of course, extremely indebted, which is my father would be for this honor. But it's appropriate, I think, because it signifies will for, for a long, long time. My father's interest in education, his love for the young, and also his love for this area. And I hope that, and I expect, that it will serve for a long, long time as a reminder of his life and perhaps inspire others to follow in his, in his path, serving their country and the world as, as constant friends of mankind. I'm sorry he didn't live to see the, this magnificent school, but he always, he was always well aware that it wasn't always granted to the sower to live to see the harvest. His work was never done in expectation of reaping the harvest. It was, it was done in faith. And you, who helped create this school, have honored my father by naming it after him, have helped fulfill that faith. And this makes my family very, very grateful to you all. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that was the speech you gave back in 1965. That was 65. Yeah, 50 years ago. And so what were your initial thoughts when you heard this school was being named after your, your father? 1965, was, I was a state representative. I was just beginning my uh, uh, political career. I think uh, there can be no uh, finer tribute for an American than to have a school named after him because education is critical to our uh, democracy. And this school is one of the finest schools in America. So uh, I know I would have been thinking that this is a wonderful tribute to uh, my father and hoping that it, uh, as I said, uh, that uh, it would remind students, remind many, for uh, all time, of the values which uh, he represented and exemplified in his life. It's a coincidence uh, we're here on a, an election day. Uh, for him, elections were not just a means of winning public office. They were a means of informing the people so they could make a, a sound judgment. Uh, he said, trust the people with the truth, all the truth. And he did. And in his campaigns, twice for president, and as what was called then the titular leader of the, uh, his party, he laid the programmatic foundation for the new frontier and the great society which followed. He began. Uh, uh, the strategic arms control process. He demonstrated that uh, it was possible to win even in uh, losing. So I hope then and I expect and know today that this school will live on as a reminder of uh, those values which I'm afraid are all too forgotten in our America of today. So do you think your predictions about this school, you know, 50 years ago were right? Uh, you, and I quote, this school is very appropriate. We are, of course, extremely indebted, as my father would be for this honor. But it's appropriate, I think, because it signifies will for a long, long time. My father's interest in education is love for the young and also his love <coughs> for this area. And I hope that and I expect that it will serve for a long, long time as a reminder of his life and perhaps inspire others to follow in his path to serving their country and the world as constant friends of mankind. Do you think that um, right now Stevenson High School is living up to what you predicted, you know, 50 years ago? Oh, I think it's exceeded my expectations. <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, and as I just said, it's one of the finest high schools in the country. And I've seen enough today to indicate that uh, um, it's uh, engaged in educating um, young to uh, our most important business, 
And that's public service. That's active engagement in our politics, whether as an office holder or just as a citizen. Um, there's more power for good and for evil in our politics than in any other activity. So I'm glad to see that um, the school carries on his tradition, uh, reminds people of his uh, values, and encourages them to follow in his footsteps by being active in our politics. There's really nothing more important, more important than today in this inter interconnected, uh, interdependent, dynamic, nuclear uh, world than it was in his time. These are, are times that are filled with opportunity and with challenge. So now that we're, you know, 50 years later, we're reflecting back on what, happened, what you said in 1965. Do you have any predictions, you know, from today, now that it's the 50th year for where our school will be, you know, five, ten years down the road, 50 years perhaps? Oh, this school is going to be flourishing for a lot longer than that. Uh, of that I am, um, I am confident. Um, it's more difficult to uh, predict in these times where our country will be. And that, uh, you know, depends on schools like this to help inform um, Americans and to educate them to the importance of being informed and of uh, serving their country. Um, this is a very different world from 1965. But my father, even then, and starting much earlier, starting in 45 after the World War, he began to recognize um, how <clears throat> interdependent countries were. He was one of the uh, founders of the United Nations, trying to create, after World War, a new uh, world order based on diplomacy on international cooperation, on development of the underdeveloped uh, countries. Those values, too, are more important today um, than they were, I think, in his, his uh, time. And so, Mrs. Stevenson, what, what is your prediction for what Stevenson High School will become 50 years from now? Well, we already see that it's uh, using the technology of the era uh, in a, in a very uh, forward-looking way. So who knows what the technology will be then? Yeah. Perhaps people will be flying from classroom <laughs> to classroom. <laughs> or, yeah, but it will be different, and yeah. I'm certain the school will be um, up-to-date mm -hmm. and current with those technologies mm -hmm. to, to broaden the understanding on a world basis. Yeah. Okay. Now, let, let's go back to the present. If your father um, was alive today, what would he, his impression be of our school? Oh, if he, he would be overwhelmed. As I indicated earlier, there's no finer tribute to an American than to have a school name for him. And this school is wonderful. It's uh, far beyond anything, I think, that he could have imagined at the uh, time. So he'd be honored, but he'd also be very encouraged, I think, mm -hmm. about um, our uh, country. Yeah. So, so now, you know, 50 years have passed, and 50 years is, of course, a very long time. And so, um, how, in your um, minds, what is the most notable change that you can think of, um, distinguishing, you know, from 1965 Stevenson and the surrounding communities and 2015 Stevenson and its community? Well, I, I, I'm, if you're referring to differences in the school, I think they're fairly obvious, but different, there are so many differences between 65 and, uh, and, and today, 2014. My father was uh, uh, governor of the state. He was twice presidential uh, candidate. I think he would really be very disturbed by the condition of our politics. His nomination for President of the United States in 1952 didn't cost one penny. He started a campaign at the convention with no program, no staff, no money. And he went on to electrify the world with 
its vision of a new America uh, and a world uh, at peace. The money that pours into our campaign, the trivialization of the uh, uh, democratic uh, dialogue, uh, this would disturb him really greatly. I'm not. I, I know I'm not sure he. I'm not sure he even could compete in, in his politics. I was his driver in his campaign for governor in 1948. That campaign cost $157,000. The whole uh, campaign. He won by the largest plurality in the uh, uh, history of the state. I can't imagine him. I can't imagine myself going around raising money or super PACs pouring in the billions now money into uh, campaigns for public office and at all levels, even in state judicial contests. Uh, this is very dangerous and, uh, you know, no Stevenson with deep roots in Illinois and going way back to the uh, mid-19th century uh, is unaware of the underside of our politics. Uh, uh, we've seen governors go to jail. But there was always an upside. There was always a response. Um, the reformers, like the muckrakers, uh, progressives and populists in the late 19th century, or the New Dealers in the 30th and in the uh, 1930s, like my father in the uh, 60s, there was always a response. And uh, I'm waiting for that response. It's election day. Mm -hmm. I can't see it coming out of this election. Uh, so the political atmosphere is certainly the, pol the, that. the politics, the atmosphere, the debasement of the democratic dialogue, the money, the, the yes, this is very different and would be very, very disturbing to my father. And it's something maybe that well, not maybe, that yeah. graduates of this uh, school uh, can help change to uh, create once again all the hope and opportunity that we knew back in the mid-60s okay. and don't quite experience today. Mm -hmm. So, Mrs. Stevenson, do you think Stevenson High School provides an important connection to your family, to the state of Illinois? Oh, yes. I mean, I'd, I'd I see by visiting and talking to the students um, that they are thinking about and taking a part in the politics of today, mm -hmm. some of them, not all of them, obviously. Um, but, they've, but they're also involved in arts and, mm -hmm. and theater and music, and these are important to the survival of the nation as well. So no, I think it's great hope. Mm -hmm. um, when Ad was talking about his father, I was thinking that another difference of today and his era was that he believed in talking about the issues in great detail. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's just sound bites. Yeah. And I think that you all in your classrooms go deeper than sound bites, mm -hmm. you, and you go into the history and to the background, yeah. and that would be something that he would value very much. Mm. So let's turn more to you know, your family and, and your personal lives, and would you be able to compare your high school experience to what high, <laughs> students in high school is like today? Oh my. <laughs> My high school, I, I, <coughs> the school I went to had uh, two people in the sixth grade, and so we jumped to the seventh grade because, <laughs> they were, uh, because there was no, you know, no point in just going from classroom to classroom yeah. by just two of us. It was a very different situation. We had no uh, big auditoriums. Um, the music teacher was sat at her piano and taught the chorus. No, it was very, very, very different. different yeah. The dark ages in comparison. 
<laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, what about your husband? Well, <laughs> I see, Lurieville was kind of the base. This mm -hmm. is where we assembled from time to time. But we were always traveling, always moving about in the world. So my high school, I went to at least three. <laughs> one of them was in London, one in Washington, and then a preparatory school. Uh, and uh, they were all very different, I can assure you. For one thing, um, the old boys, as they called them, uh, imposed discipline at the prep school here in Massachusetts that I went to with big thick paddles and lots of holes in them and one boy died uh, appendix was ruptured at uh, Harrow School in uh, um, outside London uh, the old boys um, practiced a similar kind of discipline but with the less lethal weapon <laughs> They had long switches that they beat you uh, with. I don't imagine that kind of thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if so, you better speak up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. But that's certainly a very different world. And I, I can definitely imagine. And so, um, you know, when your father was running as the Democratic presidential candidate back in 1952, he campaigned as the man from Libertyville. And um, we actually found a campaign video um, that we wanted to show you um, of, <coughs> of his campaign. And you were part of that video. And I don't know if you remember that, but. 52? Um, in 52 or 56. I was in the Marine Corps en route to Korea in 52. Must have been 56. Okay. So here's the video. The Democratic National Committee presents another visit with the man from Libertyville. Here at the end of this lane, on a farm about four miles from Libertyville, lives Adlai E. Stevenson of Illinois. But before we look for the governor, let's see the nearby town of Libertyville itself. Here is the main street, the shops, and the church. Here in markets like this is where Nancy Stevenson, the governor's daughter-in-law, does the family shopping. She drives in several times a week. And because Libertyville is like many other American communities, and because Nancy Stevenson is like so many other young wives, she's learned quite a bit about how much groceries and the like cost these days. After shopping, she drives home four miles to Governor Stevenson's farm, where she and Adlai Jr. are staying until he returns to law school. The Stevensons are returning now from a shopping trip in Libertyville. The governor is helping with the groceries. That's my daughter-in-law, Nancy, and my oldest son, Adley Jr. He's a um, uh, student at law school. I think they, they're staying with me during the vacation. I think they live pretty well, but they're learning a lot about something that worries a lot of people in this country, and that, of course, is the high cost of living. In spite of the Eisenhower promise, the cost of living today is higher than it's ever been before in the history of our country. And this is a serious matter for young people, like my son Adley and his bride Nancy. So this video goes into more about his particular campaign. And then towards the end, I don't know if you remember exactly what you said, but I think somewhere here. This is towards the end of his speech. So of course, you know, this is a very long time ago. Hopefully that sparks some good memories. But um, you know, what was that community like? What was the life on that farm like? You know, back in 1900. Well, that, that um, <coughs> advertisement suggests how different the politics was, mm -hmm. how innocent the advertisements. Nothing negative in, uh, uh, in it. How different uh, from uh, um, today. <coughs> um, what was your question, Kevin? Sorry. So, 
you know, what was the life like on that farm, you know, being in that living Well, as I, as I think I mentioned earlier, this was sort of the base. I was in the Marine Corps in Korea, or we were living in London or Springfield mm -hmm. uh, when he was when he was uh, governor. <clears throat> um, we didn't spend a great deal of time, uh, but we converged there. It was mm -hmm. the base, and we did live there for a couple of years uh, during uh, uh, World War II. But that was an entirely different. Uh, this was all uh, farm country. It was rural. Um, that home was, I think, the first to be built on uh, St. Mary's Road. And incidentally, speaking of the man from Libertyville, yeah. he, that, that, that phrase was first coined in uh, his race for governor in 1948. He was the man from Libertyville. Mm -hmm. And the city fathers, all of them Republicans, um, convened a meeting at which they concluded that he was not a resident of uh, <laughs> Libertyville. <laughs> uh, um, after his election um, as governor of Illinois, they reconvened and reached a very different conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> and from then on, he was the man from Libertyville. And he loved that home like no place on earth. He just loved it. The uh, maple trees. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful home, and it's still there. It's been uh, refurbished. Uh, it's owned now by the Lake County Forest Preserve District. Um, uh, recently designated a National Historic Landmark. And it's uh, uh, the home of the Adlai Stevenson Center on Democracy, mm -hmm. where my wife is the president. We try to carry on his legacy. So, you know, is there anything from 1965 that you might miss today? Besides gas prices, maybe, but. <laughs> I miss the politics of uh, another time of uh, 52 and 56. And, uh, I think that's what I miss, miss most, the civility. Yeah. When I entered the United States Senate, for example, in 1970, there was no partisanship. Mm -hmm. We would divide along, uh, uh, d divide over issues, but not along party lines. Uh, my colleague was uh, Senator Percy, a Republican from not far from here. We were friends. We basically saw eye to eye on, on issues, too. We worked together. We tried, regardless of party, to support our president. Um, that has changed radically yeah. now in a Congress which has become excessively partisan and collectively dysfunctional, even as the complexities of governing in this world mount. Our competencies uh, have been declining. So I miss uh, poli the politics happens. and the values which created this country. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you miss, Mrs. Stevenson? Well, we also saw the area, as, as Ad was saying, vastly changed. There, these malls and yeah. shopping centers and large um, public, I mean, lar large housing units mm -hmm. um, simply weren't there. Yeah. Uh, it was a very different place. We could walk out and see pheasant you know, in the fields. Um, <coughs> and of course, that, that is something that will never come again. Mm -hmm. um, the Lake County Forest Preserve District does try and preserve a lot of the land yeah. as it once was, which is important for us. Um, but I'm very concerned about the climate change, mm -hmm. the, um, our lack of dealing with, at, at, in this era, our lack of dealing with some of the results mm -hmm. of this sprawl and growth. And we'll have to figure out ways to have a more um, natural uh, experiences yeah. and to have food grown locally and to mm -hmm. have food grown healthily. Um, and those are issues that are still very much on the table. 
So I miss some of that. Okay. We had a vegetable garden at, mm -hmm. at Ant's father's farm that provided all of our uh, vegetables. And uh, we ate the sheep that were raised there. Um, that's not happening mm -hmm. in those areas Certainly. now. Yeah, very drastic change. So on a more personal question, Adla is such a unique name. You probably get that a lot. Do you know the origin of this name and, and why your father decided to continue this, this naming system, if you will? Well, I know vaguely the origin is biblical, and it was uh, not unusual for families <clears throat> back in the mid, let's say, 19th century to pick names out of the uh, Bible. Adlai was uh, uh, a shepherd um, for King David. Um, his name was out of the Bible. And um, it's very different. I mean, it's very unusual. If we find, if we ever meet an Adlai, we figured it's a cousin, <laughs> <laughs> a remote cousin. And uh, we're proud of it, frankly. So uh, we've. Um, continued it. Uh, Nancy and I have a son who is, uh, is an Adlai, Adlai the next, <laughs> and we have a grandson who is uh, Adlai the fifth, also known as Adlai the last, but I hope, <laughs> I hope not. He came here. He and his father came here for a dedication of some some <coughs> ceremony mm -hmm. Back in uh, when he was just five or six, and yeah. he was so impressed to see his name up on. <laughs> I, I, he could read just that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the feeling of being born into a family of politics? I mean, your great grandfather was vice president of the United States, and, and your grandfather served as Secretary of State of Illinois. And, your father was, of course, an Illinois governor and ambassador to the UN. So, was there any pressure for you to go into politics? Or? No, no, no. My great great grandfather was one of the more interesting. He was the in my book. It's called the Black Book. He's the exemplary American citizen who uh, made money, gave it all back to his community. He founded uh, what's now. Illinois State University, he founded orphanages, he founded towns, he planted trees, and he was active in his politics. He was secretary of the infant uh, Republican Party. It was Jesse Fell who pr proposed the Lincoln-Douglas debates, and after they brought uh, Lincoln to the nation's attention, it was Jesse Fell who persuaded Abraham Lincoln to run for president. Lincoln gave Jesse Fell his autobiographical sketch for promotion. Without Jesse Fell, there might never have been a President Lincoln. So, as you point, it goes out back even farther than you. <laughs> and as my father said, I was born with an incurable hereditary case of politics. <laughs> <laughs> and there was never a question. Mm -hmm. Everything I've done and did in my life, from what I studied, political theory and college, even to enlisting in the Marine Corps and volunteering for combat in Korea, was influenced to some extent by my desire mm -hmm. to be of public service through our uh, politics, and the first chance I had was to run for the state, rep state House of Representatives. So I didn't want to be accused of running on my name. I wanted to work yeah. my way up. So I Certainly. went up from state representative to state treasurer to United States senator, and then had two unsuccessful mm -hmm. campaigns for governor. Okay. And, and speaking of politics, today, of course, is Election Day. And you don't have to tell me which party you voted for, but what is the importance of Election Day that you think students should know about? Well, as I've already said, the, our politics is <coughs> life and death. It's, it's the means by which we collectively determine our future. It's our only collective means of uh, acting. And uh, um, 
Somebody once said, democracy is just a system for giving people what they deserve. I don't quite go along with that because I think the people deserve better than they are getting from our politics uh, 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 today. We have to make the best choices we, we can at the polls, but we also have to reform this political system, uh, among other things, to drain it of the corrupting influence of, uh, of, of money and to try how perhaps through public financing of campaigns and free time on television, how to restore the democratic dialogue and focus candidates on real issues, not on trivia, not on personal attacks and the like, uh, how to restore the politics that my father exemplified and are memorialized by this wonderful school. And so as we near the end of this interview, um, just on a more lighthearted note, do you have any predictions for who might win the U.S. Senate today or, or the oh. gubernatorial elections? Oh, the Senate. I, I think I can figure that one out. Favorably. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it looks like, you know, very close. There's some that are predictable, but I'm not very good at predicting this politics. And, and finally, you know, uh, do you think legislation like suffrage at 17, which Stevenson High School helped introduce to the state of Illinois, which enables 17-year-olds to vote um, in primary elections, provided that they're 18-year-olds once they're in the general election, do you think that's vital to sustain our democracy and political efficacy? Well, it's not vital, though, but it's important. If you're entitled to vote at 18, you shouldn't be disenfranchised because you um, weren't a earlier in the campaign. So I think that's a very worthwhile reform, but there are a lot of more reforms that are, <laughs> are needed. And then, of course, the active engagement of informed citizens. That's ultimately what it comes down to. How can people be informed in the information age? You think with the internet and social media and all the revolution in communications, that we'd be better informed, but I don't think it's working that way. The world certainly is becoming a lot more complex and more difficult to be informed about. But <clears throat> this revolution in communication is being misused. It's being used to deceive as well as to inform. Okay, and I promise this is my final question, but uh, I would like to focus back on Stevenson High School and celebrating on its 50th year. And so, do you have a maybe a birthday message, that, if you will, to give to the student body and the community of Stevenson High School? Well, you're an inspiration to us, and you give us, I'm speaking for you, too, <laughs> you know, more faith in our country and its uh, future. And we are, of course, uh, really very touched. I said my father would be to have a school named for him. Uh, it exemplifies his life and his uh, values. So I can't say anything more than we are very grateful and uh, reassured you know, about the uh, future and wish you well and carry on. <laughs> thank you so much for doing this interview today. I had a great time. Thank you, and Kevin. Thank you to all of our viewers. My name is Kevin Chen, and happy birthday, Stevenson High School.